All right, everybody, I am here with a very special guest, Stephen from the football app, TFA app, and uh, the TFA uh, crypto blockchain NFT project, because you guys have a lot going on. So uh, first of all, Stephen, where can people find you? Um, I will put all those links down below in the description box as well for everyone to find to find you, to find your app. Uh, but let everybody know sure. where they can connect with you and then get into what exactly the TFA is. Sure. Um, everybody can connect with me on Twitter, which is Steve underscore TFC is my Twitter. And inside the football app, we have chat rooms for, you know, everybody. I'm active in all the chat rooms all the time and I'm easy to reach inside the football app. Since it's like our own Telegram community inside the app, that's the best place to interact with me. And um, the football app.com, we have a unique spelling on the football. It's the, the Spanish, F-U-T-B-O-L. So the football app.com, that brings uh, people to the, uh, all the resources. Right. And I will put a link for all of those uh, resources down below in the description. Uh, box. So, uh, Steve, what exactly is um, is the football app? I mean, we do shows on blockchain. We do shows on crypto on this channel uh, every now and then. Probably once a week, we'll do a show on uh, on crypto or blockchain. And um, the football app does not sound like a crypto or blockchain project, but it is. And uh, it's got yeah. a lot of different components and parts to it. So break it down for our users. Uh, keep in mind that we'll have many viewers that aren't as familiar with, uh, with crypto or blockchain as you are. So just break it down in, in simple terms, what exactly your project does. Sure. So, you know, as you, as you mentioned, a lot of people's perception in the past was to be a, a crypto project, you had to be a blockchain itself. But as you can see, the perceptions are changing over time as to what, what that means, uh, you know, uh, especially with what you're calling Web3 metaverse and gamified NFTs. That has kind of opened the door <clears throat> for projects like ours to be understood in the context of blockchain through the gamification and the tie-in to the blockchain through NFT gamification. So the football app is, is a gamified Web3 platform, and it's a, a part social network. It's an NFT platform. It's a game environment. Uh, it's a uh, chat rooms and interactive community. So it kind of, that's what to me Web3 is, is the combination of all the web technologies into one framework tied into the blockchain and having an element of decentralization. That's, I think, the, you know, there's arguments what is Web3. But, you know, it's just for the, for the common person, it's just a really fun app where you can play games, interact with other fans, uh, uh, buy NFTs, create NFTs, and um, just, you know, have fun. Is it, it's football. It's completely football-related, right? I mean, well, that, it's or, football, or are you covering other sports as well? It's, uh, it's football-themed. And uh, what, what that means, uh, it'd be like if you went to a sports bar that's football-themed. You, you may or may not be into football. I would say, like, uh, maybe 30 or 40% of our user base is there mostly for the community interaction and the fun and the games and the uh, kind of the crypto and NFT side of it. And, uh, you know, but it's a football audience so that it's, there's no other uh, sports theming in there besides uh, football. Right. Okay. So uh, I imagine you're looking at Google, um, uh, Play Store, uh, Apple, Apple Store as well. Is there a standalone website for this also? Yeah, on the on the NFT side now, uh, just like you know, have OpenSea, we've got uh, kind of an equivalent uh, web interface like OpenSea at the like football. The marketplace. Yeah, marketplace, okay. and that is that's football and art themed, but it's heavily football themed. And so that's at the footballapp dot com forward slash NFT, and uh, can be found right off the website. And um, you know, it's a it's a good candidate to to lead that space because um, you know OpenSea is the leader in the general marketplace, as everybody knows, who's into NFTs for just general art and collectibles. And uh, sports is one of the very big NFT categories. They say it's the second biggest uh, area for NFT uh, buying. And then there's a lot of people um, putting out 
uh, platforms in, in that space. And so I think we have a really good chance to lead that space because we have a community of, you know, over 100,000 people around the world uh, that all have wallets. We've got partnerships with football clubs. And we have a kind of unique advantage for new people who come in because, um, you know, as you know, it, for the barrier to entry to get into NFTs is heavy. You know, if somebody's not into cryptocurrency and they go to buy on OpenSea, the number of steps they have to do is, is a little bit overwhelming. They have to get MetaMask and learn how to get on uh, different networks and how to buy cryptocurrency and transfer it and what all these things are. It's a huge barrier to entry. <clears throat> and one of the things we did within football <clears throat> is have the ability for people to simply um, uh, one click buy and uh, just download the football app, click buy and uh, get in the game that way. <clears throat> we create their wallet for them on the fly so they don't have to worry about that part either because that's uh, an unnecessary complexity for the average person to worry about. They just want to buy and hold an NFT. <clears throat> and then one of the other really fun things that we think is part of the fun of buying an NFT is showing it off. You know, this is kind of like if you go into someone's office and you look on the wall behind them, they usually have, you know, some something, some sort of rare memorabilia or collectible. Uh, and it's fun to show off <clears throat> those rare things that you bought. And I think to some degree that's missing on OpenSea because it's an anonymous platform and because <clears throat> the social discovery is not really good. You know, like uh, when Instagram becomes an NFT platform, which I think it will be, the discovery would be amazing, right? I would go to your profile, and instead of just seeing what, what photos that you've posted, uh, I would see what NFTs you've collected and what NFTs you've created. It creates a lot more visibility and a lot more action. So in the football app, uh, because it's a team-centric interface, when you go in there, let's say you're a follower of Chelsea, um, the first thing you see is the Chelsea news and the matches and, and whatnot. And then you see the chat room in the NFT gallery. And when you go into the NFT gallery, you see who, which Chelsea fans own the most popular NFTs. It's kind of a showcase, very specific to the audience who cares about that. And, um, and then also, as a user, you can create an NFT into that gallery to put it in front of all the other people. The club can put their own official uh, NFTs in there in front of everybody, but you as a, as a normal person, a fan of, let's say, the football club, Chelsea, or any club, because we cover them all in the app, could create an NFT, uh, put it in front of the fans, and sell it. It might just be a picture of you at a match uh, drinking a beer or something, or just something that had some kind of funny or meaning, or you caught a good photo at the match or a good moment. Right. So... Uh Okay, it's interesting. You've you've kind of uh, taken a lot of the the guesswork out of uh, minting NFTs and and purchasing NFTs with the fact that you know you have to download the MetaMask wallet and and learn how to integrate stuff and then um, deal with with buying on on a blockchain like Ethereum or Polygon. I think that uh, OpenSea uses Ethereum and Polygon, um, if I'm not mistaken. But um, are, are you guys on a blockchain? Uh, like, okay, so you have your your app is the wallet as well as the NFT marketplace. Is yeah. it, uh, do you have your own token? Is it, is, are you using other, uh, are you using a blockchain like Ethereum? Are people buying or minting in Ethereum or Polygon or Solana yeah. or is it your own? Yeah, we're, we're minting on multiple <clears throat> blockchains. The primary that we are minting on is Polygon. So inside the football app, it's also a wallet, right? It's, a, it's got the Binance Smart Chain integrations, Ethereum integrations, uh, Stellar integrations, and Polygon integrations, and we're we're kind of big fans of Polygon because of the low fees, and we're, we like it a lot. Uh, the good community developing around that. So actually, what we've done is weld, you know, a traditional social network and gamified uh, platform with multiple blockchains and make them interoperable for many, many different purposes, for many different kinds of games and experiences. And for many real-world potential applications like ticket buying for NFTs and all, it's just like um, like what I call it, the kind of a pure a pure Web three. So actually, the full integration of our platform into multiple blockchains, and then the touch point for people to experience that mostly is uh, buying and selling of NFTs, 
but it goes beyond that. It's special access to certain chat rooms. Like if you have a certain kind of NFT from a club, it unlocks a certain kind of a chat room and certain kind of games appear depending on different what NFTs you have. So, um, yeah, so it's the interrelation between multiple blockchains and the platform that make us kind of a, you know, Web3 crypto project. And, and we do have our own token. And uh, the token is TFC, the football coin. And uh, the we have a, a Polygon version. That's on the Stellar blockchain uh, by default. And we have it wrapped onto... Uh, Polygon as WTFC, and it will be wrapped onto Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain. You know, it's just a a technical click of a button to do that. We're starting to build the momentum behind the wrap TFC on the Polygon first, really focusing on the Polygon environment. Right. Okay. So um, let's get into the real world applications for this. Like, what is the what's the benefit for a football fan? I want to download this app and. Um, is the benefit for me uh, that I that I connect with other? You mentioned Chelsea, other Chelsea fans. Is the benefit for me that um, I could possibly make some additional income by uh, minting, by creating NFTs from when I was at the game, or my love of Chelsea? I could create my own NFTs and sell them at the marketplace. Is the benefit for me that I could potentially pick up uh, an NFT of value that? Chelsea, the football club, actually uh, creates for the fans, and maybe I have the ability to uh, to purchase that NFT via via some sort of drop or some sort of auction capability. What, what, what is this? What is the value that this adds to a football enthusiast? The model is a little bit like what iPhone did back in the day when they came out in two thousand six and seven with the iPhone. And it was the combination of multiple things elegantly put in front of you, uh, you know, that you had a browser, you had a phone, you had a, a music player, you had the ability to have different applications. The, the combination of those things together into one in a convenient way for people was super powerful, right? Because otherwise you had to four different uh, devices to do, to do that thing. And um, all of those experiences were also what would you call like, you know, state of the art top of the, you know, polished and really, really beautiful. So for us, it's the, it's the, if you love a football club, you're going to find everything uh, around it. So you can, you're going to see the chat rooms, the best place to interact with a football club in a chat room. We have the best chat rooms. They're like telegram style chat rooms, but even better. You've got an NFT gallery for the football club right in front of you. You've got all the news for the club right in front of you. You've got, um, predictions, uh, games that we run all the time, free predictions competitions and, and leagues and games. That's a second tab over on the, on the app. And people love to make predictions, even people who are very marginally into football. It's fun to predict a match and watch it and see if you, uh, see if you, uh, won. And if you got quite a few, you get on the leaderboard up in front of, you know, tens of thousands of people. Then we also have our own proprietary games one is called midnight madness which is pretty fun where people um the the midnight we define it uh you know i think we're doing it at 10 p.m which is you know uh midnight uh um dubai time and at, at midnight dubai time we have a game in the chat room that drops where you have to guess a number from one to seven and you have to guess it at midnight or later if you guess a millisecond before midnight you lose if you guess two seconds after midnight and you get the right number, you would probably not be in the top 100. You know, you have to guess the right number and in that time frame. And if you do, you immediately get paid uh, distribution of our cryptocurrency into your wallet directly. So it's like an airdrop, you know, every single night. And it's hugely popular. I mean, there, there's people in India who set their alarm clocks to wake up at four in the morning. They wake up, they click the number, and they go back to sleep, you know, because it's a different time. And people absolutely love that game. It's kind of like a community a community game. Very simple game, a lot of fun. We have another game called Pandemonium where you earn points that can convert into the tokens as well. And that it's just a, like, flo floppy birds kind of thing. It's a big hit. It's, Alex, it's the silliest game. Uh, there's really nothing graphically fancy about it. 
but people just love it. And that game has been played over 140 million times in the last uh, 14 months. I mean, that's like crazy numbers, right, for a, a small community uh, like us. Then we have the chat rooms, <clears throat> and the chat rooms are building a real sense of community. And in some ways, they're breaking down barriers and doing things like we didn't really intend to do them. They happen by accident. You know, the, you know uh, both Alice and I are, are, in, are from Cyprus, and uh, here we got big uh, political issues with the, the Turks and the, the Greek community, and the UN has been trying all these years to do these exercises and bridge building and you know, bring the communities closer together. And who knows how much money they spent on these different initiatives to create, you know, positive energy between the communities. But with, with us in the chat rooms, we have uh, Turks, Greeks, and Cypriots. And because they're aligning around a common interest of football and positive energy and playing games and they don't want to get kicked out of the chat rooms, they behave really well to each other. And once you do that, you start to gain more respect and understanding and uh, just creates like a positive community climate in all the country chat rooms. We have one chat room for the whole world and then we have one chat room in each country. And people just seem to really like this kind of group community communication model, you know, where it's like a, a feeling of uh, working together. Then, of course, we have also in the last part of the app is like a crypto wallet and a kind of a social network. So all those tools are in front of you in one, in one app, and people are using uh, earning tokens. They're buying NFTs with the tokens that they earned. In Cyprus, there's a lot of restaurants and bars that you can buy beer and food and uh, goods and services and accountants and lawyers with TFC that you earn inside the app. There's one Scottish Premier League club, uh, Livingston FC, where with TFC you can pay for tickets and merchandise for their matches. So, you know, it's really penetrating the community, you know, and giving it just a lot of fun and a lot of tools for um, economy, commerce, uh, interaction, fun. Right. So you use the TF say, say you earn TFC tokens through the apps from doing various things, and you earn it through the app, or you actually purchase the TFC. I believe you guys are selling on uh, Hit BTC, Hit BTC, correct? Uh, Bitrix or, right now, Bitrix. and then it's, okay, Bitrix, we're listing uh, we're listing on Hit BTC and FMFW okay. in the okay. upcoming Bitrix. months. So, For now, it's on Bitrix, and also we're on QuickSwap with the WTFC. But Alex, inside the app, they're earning for free. Right. There are people buying, lots of, lots of people right. buying the, the token on the outside world as well. But inside the app, they're earning for free. And the idea behind that was that um, there's no reason why a social network which generates uh, advertising revenue and sales revenue from NFTs can't share its revenue with its participants, right? That's more of like the, the, the next generation model rather than making, you know, a Mark Zuckerberg out of somebody, you know, have a, a basically a community model for uh, the ecosystem and the sharing of wealth. So all the things we built were designed to share the wealth of the ecosystem with all the people who are participating in it. I'll, I'll, I'll get to the Zuckerberg big tech model in a bit because I'm sure you have a lot to say with that. And uh, obviously crypto, uh, blockchain, blockchain social networks, I think are uh, are very interesting when you, when you compare them to the big tech uh, centralized model. But um, you mentioned uh, the Scottish club Livingston. You said yeah. that you have a – okay. So if you have the app and you've earned uh, the TFC token, you can actually um, go to, to Livingston's, uh, the football club's online store or, or something and actually purchase, yeah, you say, can I don't know, say a, jer say, say a shirt or a jersey or tickets. Yeah, it's that, not through uh, the TFC? online, but if you're at Livingston in their merchandise shop at the okay. stadium, you can pay yeah. with TFC okay. as well as you, you can just buy tickets there. You show the app as your wallet, correct? Is, yeah, you, we have a whole buying system in there, right? So they have a, they have an Android app that acts as a cash register, and you buy within TFA. You click on Livingston FC, pay tickets, and you do the transaction on the blockchain. They get the record. So it's a it's a huge commerce system built into this right. thing. For, right. For, you uh, send for, them the TFC. Yeah. They give you the the shirt or whatever when you're yeah. at the merchandise shop, and and it's done. And it's probably just the the standard scanning of the QR. Yeah. Of a QR code, correct? Yeah, it's that basically. Okay. Yeah, cool, very cool. Um, let's. Uh, you, you mentioned Zuckerberg. Let's talk about uh, big tech. Do you guys, since you are a social platform, you are uh, one of the first social platforms, one of the first platforms I've seen that is actually uh, pretty well into the Web three model. Um, first question: Do you guys uh, censor? Are you guys uh, censor proof? Do you uh, kick people off your your platform? 
Well, uh, let's, uh, you know, there, there's, there's two different things. Uh, first, we, we're kind of fortunate because we're not in the world of Twitter and uh, general political speech, you know? And I think it's a very welcome relief for people because, as you know, the world of political speech is brutal right now. The censorship is completely insane and is completely exposed. Basically, as Frank Zappa said, he said one day when it becomes too expensive for them to maintain the illusion of democracy, the curtains will come down in the back of the theater and you will see the brick wall. <laughs> and that's what's happened with big tech, right? We've seen the facade has come down and we understand what kind of monster we're wrestling with there. Uh, our approach was, <clears throat> if we were becoming a political free speech app, you know, it's, it's, uh, it wasn't our model. Our, our, our app was pretty much focused on community uh, focus of, you know, people in certain football clubs. And uh, there is, um, there's not, you know, basically we do have moderators in the chat rooms because, you know, if you, you know, any group of people that you get together, it can get unruly and um, things can get a little bit crazy. And uh, so there are, there is, you know, some posts can be deleted in the chat rooms and things like that. Um, so, you know, it's important to have some of that stuff to maintain, uh, if you're going to have a group chat room, you know, some semblance of sanity as well as some other fan from another club might pretend and register as a, a fan of Chelsea and come in and, and, or a fan of uh, Barcelona, and they're not, and they yell and scream, and they could their posts will get deleted. So, you know, we're not really in that classification of, um, you know, political speech. It's really just fun, a fun environment that people want to keep keep clean. And kind of thank God for us right now because that, man, is one of the hardest jobs in the world and one of the hottest potatoes is, you know, going direct because I'm a huge advocate of free speech and completely anti-censorship, you know, especially on a platform where it's not group chat, like where, let's say, like Twitter, where, you know, I would say something and if no one wants to follow me, really, why should anybody ever censor me, right? If, if people follow me, uh, and I say something, um, they can choose to follow me or not follow me. So those are, are, are more clear situations where, but ours is more group uh, dynamics and also partnering with football clubs. And so for now, we've dodged all that. We're just kind of a positive community energy. And I think our contribution to the world is not so much attacking um, the big censorship machine you know, at this stage, it's really just helping lay the fabric for community-based economic systems, which again is, I think, a path towards more freedom for, for everybody. Uh, shifting uh, and showing people that community-based economic systems with tokens that they create and adopt in local businesses and community uh, monetary systems is, you know, a much more uh, healthy model for the future than these kind of centralized goliaths that have... Um, you know, smashing uh, the world to pieces right now. Well, uh, yeah, definitely. I agree with you there. But what, what would you say to the argument that um, sports has become political? I, I would say probably you see it a lot more in the U.S., maybe with American sports for now than you do with football. But um, it's coming. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, the, the woke uh, ideology has definitely for sure. encroached. For sure. But, Definitely but Alex, on American sports, whether you're looking at the NBA or the NFL, uh, maybe once again, maybe in football, not so much. But it was there. I mean, people were taking a knee in uh, in the Premier League and and yeah. stuff like that. Does that? How are you guys going to deal with that? And uh, are are users um, can users take uh, take solace in knowing that I'm part of a community that is at least based on 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 a blockchain uh, platform, a, on a blockchain philosophy rather than yeah. the, the big tech centralized uh, model. Well, it is. It's community decentralized model. And, you know, wh what you're talking about isn't so much political. It's based in money, isn't it? And money's owning all the media and money's controlling all the politics. So what's happening, you get this disproportionate voice, right? Because, you know, we all know how it is if you live in a village in Greece or a village in Cyprus and you piss off all your neighbors, they're going to yell at you. But at least you know there's balance in, in that local community, and that community has its own culture and rules. But then once somebody has the power to centralize media and police and government and state and then absolutely dictate down on everybody how to think and how to speak, that's where we all feel like, you know, outraged, right? 
So what we're, our focus is more of just bringing the power back down into the community level. And we're working with uh, smaller local clubs and, uh, and, you know, helping to um, create local economic, it's really local economic community and fund systems. And uh, that is our model to work with all these small and medium clubs who are working with local businesses and local fans and just give them a healthy environment. And again, that is inherently decentralized. It's saying instead of like, you know, um, you know, one huge Goliath that has, and also our server can be broken up in thousands of pieces, you know, like it, it does distribute, right? So if, if, if at some point we got tired from, we got under pressure from, you know, some sort of central force to say this and that, we would just uh, decentralize it and let each community set up their own node and we're done with that, right? So we can, you know, for now we're not big enough to worry about that, but when we do get big enough to worry about that, our model is built on the principles of decentralization, community empowerment, and then freedom for the communities to decide what it is that, you know, the rules of of, of speech are. Those are the moderators in each of the local chat rooms and the local football clubs. They are empowered to decide what's okay and what's not okay, which is, you know, quite healthy for and, and, and consistent with the spirit of moving into, you know, Web3 community and decentralization. Right. With, uh, with, let's talk a little bit about the NFTs because I'm, I'm really interested in NFTs. Um, what is the, uh, how do you guys deal with, uh, provenance and uh proprietary works uh for example say i uh i'm on the uh on the app and i put a photo of uh ronaldo for example and i mint that yeah i, I mean is is how do you guys deal with with the fact that you know that uh that nft is really not something that i should be making money off of because obviously it's not my uh I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't have ownership of that brand or of that person. How, how do you guys deal with, with understanding which NFTs someone mints are actually theirs to sell, and which ones may belong to that superstar athlete or to the football club? Yeah. So you know, this is uh, the good thing of this because NFTs, you know, sell for money. That means you do have the uh, liquidity to be able to afford people to monitor it. And, you know, of course, they, they have terms and conditions that they're supposed to abide by. And then once they've posted, there are many cases where they're posting something which is not their original art. So then we'll have a moderator message them and say, please confirm this is your original art. And actually, you can just do a simple Google image search on almost all these images. You get about a 95% hit rate that, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious, you know, in, in a lot of cases. We do we do uh, we do a check there to see if it it's an obvious uh, um, case where they don't own the rights. But if it's questionable, we ask just you know confirm that you own this and show some proof. They just upload maybe a photo of them on the Photoshop, you know, constructing the image. So you do have to watch that, right? Because um, you know you have to have the respect for um, for the artists to help. Uh, then protect their uh, their creations as any artist wouldn't want people selling their work, <laughs> and it would reflect bad on our platform and on the person who bought the NFT. So we do have people that actually manually watch that, and we have tools to block those users, and we have tools to um, delete those uh, and hide the uh, the NFTs that are kind of you know based on um, a stolen sto a copyright violation, essentially. Copyright violations, yeah, yeah. How are prices worked out? Like, uh, how are floor prices for for certain uh, NFTs uh, determined uh, on your platform? So uh, the first thing is uh, you mint, and the mint might be a photographer, a football club, a fan, an artist, uh, whoever can create the NFT, and then they can put it for sale uh, or just leave it, to, and bids can come in. If they can, they're the ones who decide the floor price, so they will put it for sale. That's called, you know, the buy now price. And if you just want to buy it, uh, you just buy it. Or you can make an offer, uh, a lower offer. And um, that offering system is really where the real price gets um, gets worked out. And um, then we also do some auctioning where we'll spotlight an NFT to the community and run an auction on it, which is short time, you know. Uh, so... Really, it's just the market forces that 
figure out which ones are, are good. And it's pretty funny because you really never know with NFTs, which, uh, there, you know, there's, uh, I have a prediction that one of, one of the NFTs that maybe some, many people would say is the worst NFT on our whole platform, I secretly believe it will be the, one of the most valuable NFTs we have just because of the sheer silliness of it. You really never know, and people have a variety of tastes. But, you know, the tools are there for people to, um, if you put the price too high, you know, uh, then when it's a collection, Alex, it's more complex. Like, let's say, you know, we have a collection, our own collection now called Ballers, which is, uh, you know, um, football is a cultural phenomenon, as we all know, in Europe and U.S. even. It's a, it's a worldwide cultural phenomenon. And so is NFTs. And, you know, we know the board Ape Yacht Club and uh, the CryptoPunks. Everybody has heard of, most everybody's heard of those big collections. But nobody's really done a collection uh, for football, you know, so we're combining those two cultural phenomena of football and NFTs, and we've created a collection called Ballers, which is kind of pixelated retro dudes who have a position, and you can assemble them into a team, and they have some utilities, like they get a salary every week from collection turnover, they get access to a chat room with different kinds of games, and uh, there's all kinds of uh, interesting things going on there. And when you're doing a sale of a, you know, there's 10,000 of those guys. <clears throat> so when you're doing an initial sale, it's very challenging to set that initial price because you do have to set it, right? And you have to, you know, kind of guess how much demand you're going to have and how people are going to react to these things without even knowing. That's very, very challenging. And um, with us, because we didn't know that we d were doing ours in phases, right? So we, dr did, we dropped our first 1,800 uh, ballers uh, last week out of the 10,000 to see how it would go. And we sold them out quite quickly. And they were around like 77 euros per baller. And, um, you know, so that indicates like our price range is probably good for, in the, in the aftermarket, there's nobody selling them. So that's also very good. The people who are putting a few offers up to sell those inside the platform and at OpenSea are putting them 10, 20, 30 times higher. That doesn't mean they're, that's the value, but th that's the perception that they don't want to sell them. <laughs> you know, they certainly don't want to sell them for double the amount of money they want to hold these guys. So, yeah, the, the, the whole dynamic of a collection is a little more challenging. And then our next drop uh, uh, on that one is, is coming up, and uh, we're still deciding about uh, the pricing. But it's all, it's all just part of the fun. It's all dynamic and, and kind of crazy um, it, it, energy. Is the drop open to anybody, or do you have to fulfill certain requirements? Uh, no, you can. Uh, the drop's open for everybody. The The next drop will be on Wednesday, the 16th. I think the 16th is Wednesday. The so, 16th. so all you need is the app and some TFC? It's best if you have, yeah, you need the app and you need TFC, or you need WTFC and a browser and MetaMask to do it on the web, right? We have a, a website for that. It's called ballerscollection.com. At ballerscollection.com, people can get on the mailing list to get all the detailed instructions on how they can buy and when exactly is the drop and what's the price and how many. So it's, if they're interested in that, they should do it. And, you know, the, if you're ju you don't have to get the app. There's some advantages to, get in the, to do it in the app. But uh, you could just go to ballerscollection.com forward slash mint and at the time, you'd have to have WTFC, which is the wrapped TFC on the Polygon blockchain. And you would just, you know, make the purchase just like you would on OpenSea, but from the, uh, from the minting page. You're actually minting them out of nothing, right? So it's not, you don't even know what you're getting, actually. You're just manifesting a baller out of the ether. Uh, and then once you get him, you can, you can sell him or put him on OpenSea for sale or sell him inside the football app. And, uh, yeah, so they just need WTFC and uh, a MetaMask or Wallet Connect process. And although it's a lot of fun <clears throat> because we have chat rooms inside the app with games that when you have one of these ballers, you can access certain special features in the app and rooms and, and win more uh, WTFC. Right. Right. Got it. Very cool. So we just need a MetaMask, go onto the site, and you can actually pick it up like that as well. Yeah. It's pretty straightforward. If, you're, if somebody already has a MetaMask and they have a polygon network activated and they have some matic i mean there's like that's like a, it's like a one minute process for them to go from to, to the buy okay very cool uh let's uh let's broaden this out a bit do you worry about um big tech um, getting involved in uh in web3 
Do you worry about uh, sports media companies like, I don't know, say like ESPN or companies like that getting involved in uh, in Web3? Can they come in and ruin the game? You know, Facebook said they're going to they've changed their name to Meta. Um, they said they're going to come out with their own crypto and they've they've completely bungled that. They've backed yeah. down from that as well. But, um, you know, Zuckerberg's next uh, grift is definitely in uh, in crypto, in blockchain. And obviously his goal is going to be to try to uh, monopolize that and centralize that. Um, do you, as a, as a Web3 uh, platform, a social platform, do you worry about these guys? Well, in a sense, you worry about it. But I think the key there is, you know, they've got these huge resources. Uh, he, he's allegedly putting $10 billion a year. You know, they have 20,000 developers. So, you know, they sucked a lot of the talent out of the market. Uh, they're going to, as you say, they're going to get into it and muddy it and put their visions forward and they won't be very pure. They're, they're just sort of trying to make money off something that we think is much more sacred than just making money from. But I think the key there is just important for alternatives to get in the game, like us and, and many others, right? So I, I don't think, you know, they can take the whole, they can't ruin the whole thing. It just, in some ways, they help with the publicity of, of the whole thing, right? And uh, so I, I, don't, I don't really worry about it, but it is very important for other platforms to get in the game to become alternative, pure, or better versions of metaverse and Web3 so that we don't all end up in a situation like, you know, um, uh, pre, uh, back in the days when everybody was using Windows and there was just a few artsy people using the, the superior Mac in, in, in those days, right? It was like a 99% monopoly for Microsoft. That would be really bad if that happened in the Web3 metaverse space that Facebook ended up, you know, with 99% market share. I don't think it's realistic, though. I think that those big guys will have big market shares with kind of mercenary, um, you know, uh, um, kind of old school, like you say, centralized models. But um, it's more the pressure is just on um, all, all of us who are doing competing things to push them out there, publicize them, and just create a better versions of just better products for people to participating to give people alternatives to those kind of what will be highly polished but traps you know right and and right. And, it, and it becomes if you go to the philosophical level on it alex it's it's kind of a big deal because when you're talking about the metaverse right i mean to you know uh, what that means of uh, many people to me you know one simple level you're just saying it's like you know a new interface right just more uh um better graphics into a VR world or something, or, you know, better interfaces, more interactive. But, you know, this Web3 mixing all the tools of the web together with these superior interfaces together with monetization capabilities of blockchain is big dynamics. And so, you know, it, uh, it's, if we look at, um, the, there is a lot of human, uh, need for adventure and, uh, Nowadays, we've explored most of the world. You can go on YouTube and watch people exploring. There's nothing left unexplored that we perceive, right? And that uh, there's not any way for people to go um, to space, really. You know, there's just like, uh, the, you know, uh, the, the common people, we're, we're stuck here. Um, and everything's been discovered and everything's been done. In our deep psychologies, we need new space to play in. And this is where some of that metaverse is coming in. It's hitting a very powerful human psychology, and we need a new playground, a new place for the imagination. That used to be done through books, right? And, uh, you know, like uh, the, uh, the, the Lord of the Rings, um, J.R. Tolkien's uh, 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 C.S. Lewis, and uh, uh, all these guys created these imaginated, um, incredible uh, worlds that you could explore through reading. The interface was words on a page and the tool was your your mind and your imagination now we're externalizing into metaverse space and if the authors of those um experiences are just corporations right i mean that'd be the worst book writers ever you want creative people to create experiences and new new ideas with new tools so you know there's it's a it's a sensitive topic it's like it's very important that 
um, good and very good ideas get manifested into the metaverse, you know, and that's one thing that we're working on. And we, we are partnered in a metaverse project to extend out the platform beyond that. And, uh, but that's, a, that's a topic for another day, you know, but it, again, it is extensions off of, of, of what we're doing. And, uh, it's just some, something that, you know, you can kind of tell that I, it's very, I see it as very, very important actually stuff. Are you guys ready on a technical level if you uh, if and when you start to get more and more traction? Are you ready on a technical level for these big players to come after you? Yeah, yeah, we are, and um, <clears throat> yeah, we're we're very fortunate that we're kind of battle hardened through years of uh, of doing you know these kinds of things, and um, we 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 do feel that we can take the heat, and uh, that we're in a we're in a very, very good position. And so the challenge for us is more just manifesting and, you know, attracting the community. We already have a good community, attracting more community who, who, who believe in like what we're doing and support it and participate in it and be part of crafting it. Because again, you know, it's a community-based effort and it's really fun to participate in something like this and uh, good to support uh, people with good, you know, transparency in what they're doing. Because there's a lot of... Um, I wouldn't say scams, but there's a lot of um, there's a lot of people. When you're, whenever you can just you know put up a website, say the word metaverse, and you've got good marketing people, and you can you know weave a, a big tail and, and go make a billion dollars. A lot of people will go for that, <laughs> but maybe they they really aren't the right people to uh, create great experiences, and and uh, maybe their heart is not exactly in the right place. They're just you know opportunistic, which is okay. There's nothing wrong with that, but. You want to leave room for some of the real creators and artists to create, you know, really cool experiences. So it's very good for um, people to support things like us and know that we do actually have the ability to scale and to take the heat. And we know how to um, to deal with the political pressures even, you know, because any, anything that will kind of get visibility on this thing will get under a lot of attack and pressure. And you have to know how you're going to deal with that, which one of the solutions is always more decentralization, just getting it out of your hands and into the community faster. So it's no longer the hot potato where you're at the center of the storm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, something like uh, football communities, I'm sure is a very big uh, money maker for e even a, a platform like Facebook, which may not be seen as a sports platform, but, you know, I'm sure they've got very, uh, a lot invested in big uh, football groups on their platform. So when, whenever a competing um, platform a competing business encroaches on that, you know, you're well aware that they will, uh, they will go after that competing business. But, um, do you believe that, uh, blockchain and decentralization it is the, uh, and web three, because we are talking about web three is the end of the, uh, of the big tech platform. I mean, is this the silver bullet? Well, <clears throat> I think, Yes, it, it is, but it's going to take a decade, uh, this, this, this shift. And time goes by. And, um, you know, I remember all these tech trends, Alex, because I am like feel like the old man of the Internet now. I've been through all the things from the PC. It was, you know, when I was 13 years old, I was actually working in that industry, even at that, you know, doing things at that time. Internet, mobile phones, uh, blockchain. Um, always you would have, you could see the, what, where it's going to go and you think it's going to happen in a year and it takes time. It just takes time because the human behavioral changes take time and it took crypto a decade to get to where it is now. Right. And it's incredible where it's gotten in this 10 years. Right. It's absolutely mind blowing. <clears throat> it will be the same. Um, so it's, 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 a, a it, the silver bullet has already been administered in a sense. And uh, over the 10 years, you'll just see a lot of more balance and, and decentralization. And I think, curiously, what you'll see is a, a wedding of some centralization and decentralization, using those tools appropriately. You, you know, there's, 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 every tool in the shed can be used correctly. We didn't have decentralization as a tool in the, sh in the shed, which led to these very bad abuses. But there are some cases where... There is some limited amounts of centralization that are very useful, 
And I think uh, the CZ of Binance said that, and he got beat up two weeks ago. And I think I understand what he was what he was saying. Although I do fear Binance will become a big Goliath that clubs us to death again. You know, so I am worried about them as well in terms of just the sheer scale and power that they're getting, and how much heat they must be under, and how many forces would be trying to get control of that machinery. But uh, yeah, so. 10 years, and you know, remember we have big scalability issues on blockchain. And can you imagine uh, if they're struggling with simply writing simple transactions to a ledger at scale, can you imagine trying to have you know, 5,000 posts per minute with complex database queries all running across distributed architectures? As a person who does this professionally, I'm um, telling you they can't do that. And, but it's a vision that we're working towards, but we are not even, we're not there yet. And so you, you, anything like what Web3 is going to be combining some decentralization and some centralization, the, decentral, the centralization you need for scalability and the decentralization you need for accountability and uh, transparency. And if they're used correctly together, that could be the formula that really holds up in the future and creates... Uh, you know, a correct balance. So I know, I know some diehard people uh, who are completely decentralization focused would be upset at that, and, and that's okay. I understand that we need them to keep being like decentralization purists because that has been a missing link, but it will balance out, and we probably will be quite happy with the result over 10 years of what we see this evolve into. Yeah, that's an excellent uh, insight. Uh, final question: Do uh, do you worry about uh, government government regulation, uh, central bank digital currencies? Do you worry that the governments could force big tech to clamp down on uh, crypto wallets and crypto apps and blockchain platforms as well? Um, do all these things concern you? Because at the end of the day, what uh, where we are heading towards could be uh, freedom of. Uh, of money, freedom of transactions. Yeah. And that's obviously I don't need to tell anyone that's watching this video. Yeah, <laughs> that is yeah. that is not going to please the the Fed or the central banks whatsoever. Yeah, I, I think um I'm not worried about it. And but I'm extremely aware of their powers and I'm laughing because uh the, they're they're already slayed and um they're just lashing out and whatever they do is gonna backfire. Uh, there's no way they can, it's too much of a cultural movement. There's too much commitment to this. There's too much unity on this issue, you know, within the community of crypto. And in, with NFTs extending it out, I, I think I, I did a tweet the other day and I, I said one, one point and I said, um, crypto is much more likely to, to regulate government than government to regulate crypto in terms of the capability of it. Crypto is going to change government a lot more than government can stop crypto. So I, I do expect every attack in the book, they'll throw the kitchen sink, they'll throw the empty gun, they'll scream a uh, victim, they'll, everything will, and they, none of them will work. It will be turbulent. They've already lost, and we just need to you know keep our cool and allow these just keep focused on the positive and keep marching forward and ignoring that because, um, you know, it's just waste, uh, it's sideways energy at this point. The battle, in my opinion, is won, and I'm pretty good at this kind of analysis. Yeah, hold the line. Absolutely. All right. Uh, any uh, final uh, comments or, or anything else that you would like to tell our viewers uh, before we sign off? Yeah, I mean... Uh, no, just uh, I'd encourage everybody to take a look at that Ballers collection, Alex, because it's it's kind of really, really hilariously cute. I, I'm going to pick one up. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it, I'll the, pick be, up a couple. <laughs> be careful; they're they're addictive. These things, and uh, and it's a you know it's got this energy in it. It's got it's very lucky. I mean, it's something magical happening in that thing. Because, you know, I've done so many things and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't work. You can never gauge if somebody, how people are going to, like, it's artistry, right? Like, whether people will like this painting or that one, you really don't know. Uh, and you're not really necessarily even doing it for that reason. But this one has just got this kind of hit feel to it. And it's got a great model and a lot of football players are getting behind it. So um, definitely would want to point out to take a look at that collection and see how, how you think about it. Because... Uh, it's just a huge energy brewing behind it. So that one's at, you know, again, the ballerscollection.com. Get on the uh, 
get on the um, on the list and be get get a little bit of WTFC to be ready for the uh, drop on uh, Wednesday. Yeah, in uh, in a little less than than, than a week. I'll yeah. put the link for for that as well in the description box so people can check it out and people can pick up. Uh, that NFT. Become a baller, yeah. That's right. Become a baller. All right. We will leave it there. Uh, the football app, everybody. Steve, thank you very much for uh, joining us. Let's do this again. And, uh, yeah, thanks after, a lot. After all the, uh, the for work sure, we'll uh, the, the love to follow up and have you on our crypto chat as well. We're we're due yeah, for a yeah, part absolutely. two there. Yeah. I think uh, I think it was uh, NFT discussion, and you and it's pretty pretty prescient now to go back and look that you predicted all this NFT pretty accurately. From your perspective, you already knew that it was going to be big before it was really big. Yeah. 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 You want to give a shout out to the channel as well that you have? Oh, yeah. Uh, we have a crypto chat, which is every Sunday at 3 p.m. Cyprus time, which is 1 p.m. UK time. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pretty cool discussion on, uh, you know, basically the geopolitics of what's going on in uh, crypto. And, uh, you know, it's good overall fun. Cool. Cool. All right. We will leave it there, everybody. Take care.